It's non-relational. It's whatever I see and interpret for myself. It's just you hand me a plate full of ideas. And from the experiences I already have, I intellectually assess them. That's non-relational. And therefore, <coughs> you're not changed by non-relation. Did you ever fall in love with a book? No. You read about love, you read about the ideas, and you thought it all sounded wonderful. But the end, it was still just in the head. She asked if she could be saving people with it. Without the relationship, there is nothing. Do we do this type of activity and confess Christ? Oh, yes, you can. That we can do all kinds of things that have benefit. But if you don't have the relationship with Christ and others, it does you no good. If you prepare a meal, the most perfect meal, but you don't eat it, you don't benefit. You gentlemen will leave with that. But then, then you next. How many poor people in your communities? <laughs> well, you can tell by two, these two aren't it. Somehow, Kabadosh and Father, they will go into the desert. And St. Mary went to the desert. St. Sergei Radonich, our Russian, when he rejected and people were coming to him, they were coming to him. He didn't walk around the streets, people were coming to him. And the question is, do you know? Отец? So, do you does the preacher know any, at, at least one social worker who became a holy man? <laughs> well, I would hope that St. Sergius uh, Mary of Egypt, the fathers of the Egyptian desert, that they were all motivated because they had experienced God and wanted more of it. That's why they did what they did. But there is also a directive in the Gospels. Which is why there are missionaries. Go forth. Teach all nations. And baptize them. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. That is a directive from Jesus Christ. So should we, should we go to the streets? Should we go to the marketplace? Of course. Should everyone do it? Of course not. But not everyone's saying they want to be a missionary. I was told this group was here because they were interested in being missionaries. Or they were in seminary taking classes on mission work. So I was trying to respond to that context. Certainly, 
Конечно, I would encourage you я бы как бы воодушевил вас to go to the desert, пустыню, find a cave, пещеру, and stay there, и останьтесь там, and we will come find you, а мы придем, вас поищем, when you become old. Когда вы станете святым. It's a very sad story that a project burned out from inside. I have two questions for you. Did, did you personally experience that or with someone else? What did you advise to a person who understands that he burned out from inside as a missionary or as a person? <coughs> No one Никто ever burns out from love. One only burns out from love of self. I have met many, both clergy and non-clergy, within the church, who were doing things But the main motivation was self. No, главная мотивация была сам для себя. And they suffered much. И они страдали очень много. When I in my life had struggles, когда я в моей жизни имел свои варенья, я имел варенья в жизни. It always goes back to my relationship with Christ. Это всегда возвращалось моим взаимоотношениям с Христом. It always takes me back to. Это всегда меня возвращало обратно. Am I spending enough time with the Lord? Достаточно ли я время провожу с Богом сам? Am I praying enough? Достаточно ли я молюсь? Am I getting out of the way so God can work through me? Or am I allowing my ego and my personality? If you don't spend time alone with God, you'll never get to know Him. You have to learn how to pray. You can pray everywhere. You can pray all the time. But you have to learn taking time to learn. If you ice skate, the first day, you don't ice skate for six hours without falling. You have to practice and learn and practice and learn until eventually you don't think about it anymore. And you escape. In the beginning, all you do is think about where your feet are. And how hard the ice is when you fall. So, you learn to pray with much toil. It's work. But then eventually, you skate freely. Yes? I read the story of the mother of Christ. I had many children, one of them was a Christian, they had much love. We cannot be happy as us. Something should happen. Father Fyodor was hit in a car accident. And he died in a car accident. How would you comment the situation? What the fear of God and death was he indicated? I don't know where to begin with that one. If we believe that God loves us, and if we believe that God is in charge and control of everything, then we learn to accept everything that comes in our life as coming from God. 
And we may not understand how it works. But if we recognize that God loves us more than we love ourselves, then we accept everything. And even if we can't see it, we believe it. And then we're able to accept things. Marriage can be a great source of holiness. Marriage can be an express ticket to hell. Depends on you <coughs> and how you use it. He needs to something here. He's got a little bit of asthma, so well. He has to have an inhaler. tell you, somebody asked about experiences of people. Uh, one person I always bring up, because I promised I'd pray for her the rest of her life, and I ask you to pray for her after this, uh, there was a woman that I knew in a parish, Anna. and Anna, Anna uh, when she was a young girl, was very attractive, and so she had young men around her like flies, and she was very proud and very vain, and so she picked her husband because he looked good. And because he was very enamored with her, in love with her. And two to two and a half years, I can't remember exactly. After they married, he had a total mental breakdown. He never spoke to her again. She took care of him at home. She took a job three blocks from her house in a luggage factory. And she made the leather handles that go on the house. She took that job so that she'd be able to come home at lunch to see her husband and be nearby whenever he needed it. He lived for 50 years more. She had a husband who never spoke to her for 50 years. She loved him. She spoke to him. She prayed with him. She was with him all the time. And when I heard about it, I said, oh, Anna, you have such a cross. She said, no, Father. God gave me the husband I needed. I never would have learned to love without him. I love him so much. And he helped me love God. Does marriage work? Absolutely. I'll tell you another story about marriage. Our monastery is in the mountains in New York. And there's a family that lives nearby. They're Roman Catholic. Eight children. The father's a truck driver. And one of our monks went to school with both the husband and wife. But he didn't know it. They didn't know they were living there and they didn't know he was in the And they met when they were working, doing something in town. So the family began to come to visit. And one Saturday, the first time the father came, he came with his 16-year-old son. And they came for vigil. We had no chairs. We stand for three hours. 
They had no idea what was going on. Они даже не имели никакой идеи, что происходит. They stayed the whole time. Они все время оставались. So afterwards, we invited them to supper. После службы пригласили пригласили их на ужин. And I said to the young boy. Я спросил молодого мальчика. Those services were long, weren't they? Я говорю, разве длинное было это служение? He said, yeah. And I said, was it hard not standing? And of course, he was a boy. So. Тебе тебе трудно было стоять? No, no, it was okay. Он сказал, да нет, в порядке. And I said, yeah, sure. Я говорю, да, я уверен. So. And they came in for the dinner. And I said to the father, what do you have to do to get a 16-year-old boy to come to church for three hours in a church he doesn't even go to and not complain? And the father didn't answer, the son did. He said, today is my Saturday with dad. I said, what do you mean? He said, every Saturday, each one of us, in two months, we get one Saturday with Dad. We get to spend the whole day with him. Whatever he does, we get to be with him. He says, I don't care just as long as I'm with Dad. Can you imagine having a child, a family, where they would say, or Dad, I want to spend the day with you. I don't care what you do. I love you and I just want to be with you. Can you imagine? Can you imagine what kind of father that is? That the children love him so much. So we began to know this family. The father drives a truck. And he will go at 2 o'clock in the morning to the church. They have their church open 24-7. And they have people assigned to pray. And he will go and spend two hours praying before he goes on a trip. And then he does his job. And so, then one day one of the girls came with him. And, and then we had people give us their old cars when they're falling apart. They figure they'll thin out the brotherhood with bad cars. So we had one car that was really a wreck. It wasn't worth fixing. And I didn't want the monks driving it. So I asked the mother one day I'd stop at the house. I said, some of the boys work on cars. I said, but they like this car and they can have oh, they'll love it. So the oldest son who was 28, 27, came the following Saturday with the father. And he said, I can fix it up. We're grateful we'll take the car. And I said, oh, you came to help your father? Now he's married and has three children. No, it's my Saturday. I said, you still do it? I'll do it all my life. Think about that. I said, do your children go to church? I said, how do you get them to go? He says, we go. That's who we are as a family. We've never asked. We just go. He said, we never ask them what they want for dinner. We, just we don't ask if they want to go to church. We just go. And they go. They came to our monastery for Christmas. You know, they celebrate Christmas at a different time. So they stayed, not all, there were five of them, I think. They stayed the night. Liturgy at midnight. They came to the meal afterwards and were there. And I jokingly said to the, the wife, because they were sitting at the table and she was telling the children to do something. I said, so who's the boss in the family? You? 
obey your husband? Is she says, God is. Is 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 is. And she says, my husband obeys God. And I obey him. <coughs> you want to know why it works? <coughs> Could you say that in your family? <coughs> Do you have your children waiting for their Saturday? <coughs> you bought the world. You teach your children and yourselves according to the standards of the world. That's why you have the world in your life. That's why you have the world in your family, not God. This family lives according to the gospel. And they have a holy family. Follow me, the Lord says, and I will give you eternal life. My words are the words of life. I promise you, if you follow Jesus Christ and do exactly as he says, you will have the cross. You will have great suffering, but you'll be filled with peace, with joy, with love, and in the end, you'll have eternal life. What you're doing doesn't promise that. Oh, now the hands are going. So this one first I saw, and then this lady. Pardon? Uh, do the children have the same day with mother? Oh, they all want to be with mother. But uh, the mother's incredible. She's present to the children all the time. Uh, we went one day to leave some food at the house. And outside of each of the children's rooms were plastic laundry baskets. I said, what's that? She said, that's their clean laundry. She said, I will wash it, but they will fold it and put it away and iron it when it needs it. And then they'll bring the dirty laundry to the thing. That's how they help me. And, you know, they don't walk out. They hug her. They kiss her. They, they call her on their cell phone. She goes, she, goes, she goes to school, to the games. They love her. And she loves her husband. It's, it's an amazing household. This gentleman and you. Yes. Forgive me, is Anna still alive? No, Anna reposed in the Lord. I'll tell you one more story about Anna. She's worth, she's worth pray for her, please. She'll help you greatly. Um, Anna was in a parish. <coughs> in a part of the city that was the Orthodox population had disappeared. <laughs> and the bishop was going to close the church. <laughs> and she said, you can't close the church. I was baptized in that church. <laughs> and that's my church. You can't close it. <laughs> but his plans were to close it. <laughs> but God heard her prayers. <laughs> and she died before it was closed. <laughs> but they got a priest there who was sent to close it. And so he wasn't interested in doing any more than he had to do. Because the church was going to close. So it came to Great and Holy Friday. And she wanted to do the staying at the Plachanitsa all night. Because she and her mother had always done that. So when the service was over, the priest is ushering her out to close the doors. She says, Father, Father, I'm going to read the psalm. He says, no, there are not enough people and I'm closing the church. She says, Father, it's never been closed. He said, Anna, I'm closing the church. So she went to her home. She got a folding chair, she got her psalter, she got a candle, and she came and sat on the steps of the church and read the psalter. 
and the police came by as they patrolled the area. They see a little old lady sitting there. She was in her 80s at the time. Sitting there with a candle. And the, the policeman goes up and says, what are you doing here? So she explained it was great and holy. And the policeman was a Catholic, so he knew about the house. And she said, well, why aren't you in church? Well, the priest closed. He says, do you know where the priest lives? He lives around the corner. The she said, he says, let's go. He goes and he pounds on the door. And the priest comes down, you know, he says, and he says, what's going on? He said, are you the priest? He says, yes. And he says, do you know this lady wants to pray in her church? You ought to thank God you have people who want to pray. You, you go open the church or you're going to jail. And the priest will open the door. Her prayers are very strong. So ask for honor, she'll help you. Well, the question you asked is easily answered, but not easily done. Why should you feed them? Why should you give them money? Because you love them. Why should God answer your prayers? Why should God care anything about you? What have you done for God? He loves you. Whether you love him or not, he loves you. Whether you do anything he asks or not, he still loves you. There's nothing in the gospel that says, find out if they're worthy of being helped. Find out if they're going to use the money for drugs or alcohol. Wasted. Find out whether they're lazy and not working and why should I help them? The Lord says if they're hungry, feed them. If they ask for your shirt, give them your coat as well. And why does he say that? Because he wants you to love not yourself, not things, not the false power you think you have over your life. But he wants you to love like he loves you. And then there'll be no poverty. There'll be no atheists. There'll be no alcoholics. Because love will conquer all. And the one that love will conquer the most is you. It is you who will be changed. It is you who will see the face of God. So they are foreign to me. Okay. I just met them on the way. <coughs> Let me explain to you something. Uh, I don't know anybody in here except for Anna. Where is she? I know her. A few others. Um, let's say the gentleman in front of you with the white shirt and the beard. And the woman in front of her. And the next man, those, those three, this way, those three. Why should you love them? Let's say the lady, you love her. She's wonderful, she's rich, she's okay. And this gentleman over here has been kind to you, he's smart, he's got a, a, big, a business and he may help you. 
and this one is sarcastic. А это сарказм. He thinks you're a jerk. Он говорит, что вы просто шут. And so you don't want to be bothered with him. И вы как бы не хотели с ним So you then say, и после этого вы говорите, I love her. Я люблю ее. I love him. Я люблю его. I don't love him. А того я не люблю. You know what I say to you? Знаете, что я вам скажу? You don't love him. Вы не любите его. You don't love her. Вы не любите ее. You don't love him. Вы не любите его. You love yourself. Exactly. Because love is without distinction. Because God loves you even though you're a beast, He loves you. In your mind, why would God, the creator of all things, even give you a thought out of seven billion people in the world? Who are you? Yet he okay. loves you totally. More than you love yourself. Can you imagine loving more than you love yourself? But the problem is, not is anybody worthy of love, is that we haven't a clue what love is. Because we're totally wrapped up in ourselves. And if you love yourself, you can't see anything you're blind. This young man's going to have his arm break off if we don't answer his question. Listen right here. <laughs> you, you obviously didn't go to the school I went to. When, when I went to school, you put your hand up, and within the first three minutes you weren't answered, you put your hand down. Because you'd already been answered, and the and teacher was answering somebody else. But I'll answer you this time, but this is your big chance. So put it all together and give me your works. This is your big moment. Now, what are the notes you're getting? used to have a good solution for that. He used to warm my bottom for me. <laughs> and then I behaved. <laughs> it works. <laughs> and if I forgot, he warmed it up again. those who hate the church, how can you not love them? If you love him, you have to love them. So what you're saying is, I don't love God, and I don't love them, so you're no different than the ones who hate the church. You just have different things you hate. So you don't know about love any more than they do. He has some questions here. Oh, a pile of questions. Uh, there's that lady down there in front of the guy with the red shirt. Did we get her already? No. There is such an expression to know the will of God. 
can you determine if you have several variants of the So, so, so the women have a choice of two thousand. How can I do that? Is it? Can we? Probably say the question like that. Um, the will of God is quite simple. The will of God, asking what is the will of God, is not the same as saying, how should I live out the will of God? The will of God is simple. You are to love the Lord your God with your whole heart, your whole mind, your whole soul and all your strength and your neighbor as yourself and keep my commandments that's what he asks how you do that is secondary to the fact that whether you do it or not so if you're a Christian and you want to get married you better seek a man who loves God more than he loves himself, who loves God more than he loves you, or the two of you will dance to hell together. And you better love God more than you love him. And you better love God more than you love yourself. Or neither one of you will take each other to God. And if you don't think I'm right, ask anybody here who's married. Alright, I think people are getting exhausted with me. And so I'll get wait, 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 take it easy, take it easy. I'll give you the chance to, to break out. You can take off. Some of you feel trapped and you want to be polite. I'll have a glass of water and look the other way. And you, can, and you can take off. And then those of you who stay will talk. The deal? Take off. All right, give us five. Если кому-то действительно сейчас время уже позднее, на улице скользко и темно, если кто-то хочет идти домой, то никто не обидится. Это ваше право.
вы их можете вносить в нам, и мы будем рассматривать и учитывать максимально ваше желание и ваши просьбы. Сегодняшняя встреча, репортаж о ней будет выставлен у нас на сайте. И информацию также мы по максимуму будем на сайте выставлять. Будем сотрудничать вместе. Спасибо. Один из таких вопросов, который задается священник всякий раз. I don't know how to pray. Я не знаю, как молиться. Can you teach me how to pray? Можешь ли научить меня молиться? And often the solution is очень часто решение такое. Read this book. Читайте эту книгу. Try this. Попытайте вот это сделать, вот это сделайте вот это. That's the end of it. Это как бы на этом заканчивается. But that doesn't teach you to pray. Это не учит молитве. So in order to pray, для того чтобы молиться, you have to love. Нужно любить. If you don't love, если не любишь anybody other than yourself, кого либо кроме себя then all you're going to think about when you're trying to pray is yourself. So the first thing is to get over yourself. You need to be in recovery from yourself. But when you pray, don't try to do too much too soon. Many people get this idea they, they want to love God so they're going to spend the whole night praying I can see by the looks on the face of Moshe that's never happened but some it's happened but they get very enthusiastic and it ends very quickly because they're looking for something they're not looking to give they're looking to get and so they pray because they want something from God and God has already given you everything you need so he lets you wait a little while I use the analogy we are like wild beasts. If you bought a piece of property in the woods and there was no one for great distances around you and they told you there were wild animals, bears and everything else and right behind where you built your house there's a bear living but you don't want to kill the bear so, so what do you do? you go and you try and first of all see where the bear is and then if you want to tame the bear you don't go over and pet it it will eat your arm off you go slowly from a very safe distance you throw out some food and you get out of there and you keep doing that until the animal begins to trust you and it lets you come a little closer you give it more food now the animal is beginning to rely on the fact you're going to bring him and it begins to like the food and you bring the animal closer and eventually the animal seeks the food you have and wants more when you teach someone to pray, you start with telling them what prayer is, and then slowly you give them a little prayer, and a little more, until eventually they taste and see that the Lord is good, and that they will be fed and they want more slowly not give them cannons that break their back and that they try and then just give up and prayer is the conscious awareness of God's presence 
God is always here. We're not conscious of him. The Lord says, love me with your whole mind. That's prayer. You are totally consciously in God. Everything you do, your consciousness is with you. It's like when you love someone. Wherever you go, whatever you do, they're in your consciousness. You long to be with them. That's the prayer without ceasing. The words of prayers that we receive are guides from people who knew God and knew how to pray. So we take those prayers to help keep us on track. They're like a road map. They keep us from getting lost in ourselves again. But they in themselves are not prayer. You can read them for hours and not pray. Because your consciousness is in yourself. Try and pray. And you remember where you lost something two years ago. Because your mind is all over the place. Because you're not thinking of God. You're still in love with yourself. And therefore what you love pulls you back. You're distracted all the time because the one you love is you, not God. And so you're constantly going back to yourself. You have to struggle to love God. First, love the Lord your God with your whole mind. Then you will pray. So if you're having struggle with praying, first and foremost, it is because you love yourself and you don't love God. Start loving God and you will find prayer problems. So it's a battle. And just reading it's not going to make it work. Loving is going to make it work. And the Lord says, if a man says he loves the God whom he cannot see, but does not love the brother he does see, that man is a liar. So, in order to love God, love your brother. If you want to see God, see God in your brother. Love your brother and you can pray. I guarantee you. So, that was just a little, uh, a free gift to help you pray. So when you're saying, I can't pray, you just need to simply say, I can't love. And say to yourself, I'm sick of myself. I want to love something other than me. And then he'll start. Yes, sir. Church, they do not remember our doctor as people. The Lord helped them. Anyway, what's wrong with this? Написано так, так же как-то отношение. Вот в церкви напоминает неприщённых людей, а как Господь их всё равно любит. God loves everyone. Господь любит каждого. We have liturgical services. У нас есть литургические богослужения that are for Orthodox Christians. We can pray for anyone and everyone. But we don't do liturgical services because they're not part of the family. You go to school, some of you. You go to work. You have neighbors. It's your husband, your wife's, your child's birthday. You don't buy a gift for everybody in the apartment building. 
You don't go take gifts to everybody at school when it's your son's birthday. Because there are things you do within the family. things you do to the larger family. It doesn't mean you don't care about the kids or in the apartment building. So we pray in church for those who are Orthodox who believe what we believe. And in your own prayers, you can pray for all those souls. But God loves everyone. And we should do the same. I'm taking a risk at answering this the way I'm going to answer it. But the biggest sect I deal with are ignorant Orthodox who do not know what the church is and has all kinds of bizarre uh, ideas they think is the church. That's far worse than any other people I know. Because they have the pearl of great price. God is not known by the intellect. He is known in the heart. And therefore, you don't start with intellectual battles. You start with loving and showing them the love of God. It's, it's that difficult and that simple. We are terrible lovers. We don't know a thing about it. We're all suffering with dreadful relationships, messed up families, and a mess inside because we don't know how to love. You ask what to do with those kinds of situations with church and sectarianism. I was with a, a large group of people. And everybody's trying to get a blessing. You know? And I understand. I can't bless everybody. And I understand it's people's love. And I, but a priest just said, well, tell him to go away. I said, now, isn't that what you want to hear from the Lord when you want to see him? Just go away. I mean, how can we be like that? And we're like that because we take on a function. Because we don't know how to love. We do things safely. So it doesn't, we don't get ask too much. Oh, oh, here she comes. She always wants something. I have to have an excuse to get out of here. She's lonely. Doesn't register in my head. She bothers me. She always wants something. So you go. We always think of ourselves. Just think, the Lord says that you will receive love according to the measure you give it. Don't you hope that's not true? If God's going to give you back the love you give to others, boy, you're in big trouble. Ourself. We don't want to give it to anybody else. 
The reason we have such a difficult time with suffering, with struggles, with difficulties, is two things. For us, they're non-relational. They're not connected to anyone or anything. And they are something that goes against our previous agenda. We have an idea what things should be. We have a plan for our own life. We think we know who we are and what we should do. And God's messing it all up. He's doing it his way, not my way. How dare he do these things to me? Doesn't he know who I am? Doesn't he know what I want? Doesn't he know what I'm all about? How could he ask these things? Who is he? In relationship, you understand what I'm saying. When you are the center of your universe, nothing works because you aren't the center of the universe. And when you think you are, you live in insanity. You can't handle what goes on. But when you see it all part of a greater plan than yourself, it makes sense. I had a cousin. She's died, God rest her soul. She was a very beautiful young girl. She lived in a small town. And she was it. Everybody, there she is. I mean, she was Miss whatever. You know? 
she was a bright girl. She went to university in a big city. And she was Miss Beautiful. Out of 60,000, 2,000 were also beautiful. She goes, what's going on? I'm the best. I'm the center. And they go, oh yeah? Get in line. The whole world crashed because she found out she wasn't the center of the world. God runs the world, not us. God gives you what you need. If the woman Anna I told you about had said what you just said, she would have done what everyone recommends she do. Put your husband in a hospital. He's mentally ill, he doesn't know who you are, and you have no life. Put him away, and you can have a life. She says, but put him away is not loving him. You're not sick of me yet? I'm getting tired of all of you. No, I... <laughs> if the person is hard and doesn't see the Lord, if the person is, if the person is hard and doesn't see the Lord, if uh, the person is confused uh, with love to himself, but he tries to use it for the personal advantage, and uh, what to do? Leave everything, how to struggle, uh, how to pray, how do we pray always, to always see the Lord. A very complicated question. It's a very complicated question. If a person is honest and doesn't believe God, if he is confused with his own love, if he is confused with his own work, 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 Что ему делать, оставить все или бороться? Как научиться молиться так, чтобы всегда видеть Бога? There is nothing. Нет ничего. More destructive. Более отвлекающего. There is nothing more delusionary. Нет больше ничего иллюзионного. And there's nothing lonelier than thinking you love yourself. It doesn't work. You spend all of your life wondering why. Why things aren't the way you think they ought to be. Why the world can't see how wonderful you are. I uh, had a, a woman in the cathedral in New York. <laughs> Doctor. Uh, well to do. Attractive. In her 40s. I said, why aren't you married? Yes, She says, listen, Father. She's very New York. She's New York. And I can't stand myself. How can I do this to somebody else? I said, that's the kind of woman I like. She knows what she is. She says, well, why would I do that to somebody else? Oftentimes, we look to somebody else to give us all we don't have. When in reality we have it anyway. We have it. Because what we are is what God made us. You could spend your whole life upset that you don't look, you don't look like that person. They're taller, they're thinner, they're better shaped, they're whatever. Wasting your whole life about what they look like, which doesn't mean anything anyway, and just doing who you are and what you are. 
It's because we focus so insanely on ourselves. I remember when I had my 14th birthday. I had an aunt who used to come visit. She never married. And I thought she was the most difficult woman on earth. And I remember it was my 14th birthday. And she was hard of hearing. So she, she never heard what we said. Well, I had no idea that she got a hearing aid that day. So she was sitting there. And I said, I wish she would leave. I don't know why she came to my birthday. All she wants is the attention for herself. She turned and looked at me. She says, change. Or you'll end up like me. She scared me to death. And she said, <laughs> kind of like, and then she said, the worst thing in the world is to spend your life with just yourself. That's the worst torture you can have. And I've never forgot. I, I can still see her sitting there. And then, of course, I was at, why don't you tell me she had a hearing aid? Why did you ask that? <laughs> so I, that was many years ago. Сегодня у отца Якима это не первая и даже не вторая встреча. Вот. И сегодня начался день с божественной литургии, и он проходит всю во встречи и встречи, поэтому мы должны, наверное, и пожалеть батюшку. Поэтому... Father wants to go relax. and then you can go if you want to talk you can come up Same thing. And tears 
tears of repentance uh, come from a lifestyle. If you are not in repentance, if you are not radically changing the direction of your life, from focusing on yourself to focusing on God, they're not tears of repentance. And they are probably not tears from God. They're human emotions. And they're gratification for self. So you have to be careful. The prayer may just be about you. And not God. I suggest you get a good spiritual father. It's always better to have someone who can help you than try to I want to be considered of the monks at the monastery. I have to give a talk at Lavra tomorrow. Liturgy in the morning. So, uh, it's busy. I appreciate your time, your attention. God bless you all.